determine the numerical value of m. We are given n, the center of the circle, and that's where we have our variable m. Another information that we are given is the coordinates of r and s together with the radius of our circle. It is said to be 17 units. So we can go ahead and try setting up an equation for our circle in the form x minus a squared plus y minus b squared being equals to r squared. So we're going to have x minus the x value of our center, which is 2. So we have x minus 2 squared plus y minus the y value at the center of our circle. That is m. We square that and this is equals to the radius squared. The radius is 17 units, so we're going to have 17 units squared. As you can see, if we substitute a point on our circle, then we're going to easily find the value of m because we're going to have a value of x and its corresponding y value. The only variable that we're going to have is m. So we can either substitute the coordinates of r or the coordinates of s and get the value of m. The coordinates of r minus 13 and 5. If we go ahead and substitute that, we're going to have minus 13 minus 2 squared plus 5 minus m squared, meaning equals to 17 squared. Minus 13 minus 2, that is minus 15 squared plus 5 minus m squared. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 multiplied by minus m is minus 5m. You multiply that by 2, you get minus 10m. And then minus m multiplied by minus m, that is plus m squared. This is all equals to 17 squared. So we're going to have m squared minus 10m plus 25 plus minus 15 squared minus 17 squared being equals to 0. So we're going to have m squared minus 10m minus 39 being equals to 0. So we're factorizing this equation here. The question to ask ourselves, which two numbers do we multiply and get minus 39? But when we add them, we get minus 10. That is minus 13 and plus 3. So we're going to have m minus 13 multiplied by m plus 3 being equals to 0. m is equals to 13 or m is equals to minus 3. Let's look at m and its position and see what makes sense. m is the y coordinate in the first, second, third, fourth. In the fourth quadrant, y is negative. So the answer we are going to take is that m is equals to minus 3. It is not equals to 13. Right, so that is the value of m. The equation that follows, we are supposed to determine the equation of the circle in the form x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equals to r squared. We have all we need to set up this equation. We're going to have x minus 2 squared plus y minus minus 3. So it is just y plus 3 squared being equals to r squared. We know that our radius is 17 units. So we're going to have 17 squared. What is 17 squared? That is 289. So instead of writing 17 squared, we can write 289. So let me just do that instead. We have 289. And this is the equation of our circle. Let's go to 4.1.2. Determine the gradients of NR. So let's go ahead and look at NR. We have the coordinates of R and we have the coordinates of N. So it will be pretty much straightforward. So NR will be equals to... Uh, let's say y of r minus y of n divided by x of r minus x of n. So what is y of r? That is 5. And y of n is the value of m, which is minus 3. 
everything divided by x of r which is minus 13 minus x of n which is 2 nr is equals to 8 divided by minus 15 and just like that we have the gradient of nr let's go to the question that follows b uh, we're supposed to find the gradient of ns this is too good to be true how can we find the gradient of nr and then after doing that we find in the gradient of ns um something seems fishy but we're going to find out soon ns ns do we have the coordinates of s yes we do here they are they're given to us in our problem statement so we're going to have y of s minus y of n divided by x of s minus x of n what is y of s that is minus 11 minus y of n which is minus 3 everything divided by x of s x of s is minus 13 minus x of n which is 2 on the numerator we have minus 8 and on the denominator we have minus 15 so this is just equals to 8 divided by 15. we have the gradients of nr and that of ns the question that follows 4.1.3 the tangents at s and r intersect at p calculate the size of p2 six marks so maybe we're calculating the gradients of nr and ns so that we can answer 4.1.3 because without us calculating the gradients of nr and ns previously 4.1.3 probably has a 9 or 10 marks so it makes sense that we had to calculate the gradients of nr and ns so that we can use them to then find the size of angle p2 let's see how we can actually do that so p2 is this angle here let's just highlight it so that it is clear to see we have the gradients of ns and that of nr ps and pr are tangents and the tangents are perpendicular to the radius so if we have the gradients of nr and ns we have the gradients of ps and pr if we have the gradient of pr we can find the inclination let's call that inclination k so we have this angle here well not of yet but we know fully well that it is quite easy to find the size of that angle and then we have the gradient of line ps so it will also be easy to find the size of this angle the inclination let's call it q but if the inclination of pr is k then this angle right here should also be equals to k a vertically opposite angle so we can say that q is equals to k plus p1 an exterior angle of a triangle is equals to the sum of the interior opposite so if we find q which we have enough information to do and we find k then we can find p1 and if we find p1 we're going to use the sum of angles on a straight line to find p2 so let's start with k let's see how we can find the size of angle k we know fully well that the gradient of nr what is the gradient of nr again it is minus 8 divided by 15. we want to use it to find the gradient of pr so the gradient of pr multiplied by the gradient of nr should give you nr should give you minus 1 why are we saying that the radius is always perpendicular to the tangent so now we can say that the gradient of pr is equals to minus 1 divided by minus 8 divided by 15 this is just equals to minus 1 multiplied by 15 divided by minus 8 so the gradient of pr is 15 divided by 8 so let's go ahead and find the value of k the inclination of pr so we can say that tan k is equals to the gradient so our angle k 
is equals to tan e inverse of 15 divided by 8. And if you do that, you should get 61.93 degrees as the size of angle K. So now we have angle K. Let's go ahead and find the size of angle P. So the gradient of PS, the gradient of PS will be equals to minus 1 divided by the gradient of NS. Uh, the gradient of NS is 8 divided by 15. So the gradient of PS will be minus 15 divided by 8. So Q, angle Q, will be equals to tan inverse of minus 15 divided by 8. This is minus 61.93. If we have a negative, we can just simply add 180 to find the angle of inclination. We're going to get 118.07 degrees. So now we have Q. Let's not forget, our point is so that we can say Q is equals to K plus P1. Q is 118.07. Point zero seven, and what is the value of k? We just calculated it above. That is sixty one point nine three. So sixty one point nine three plus p one. P one should be equals to one one eight point zero seven minus sixty one point nine three. If you put that in your calculator, you're gonna get fifty six point one four degrees. But then that's not it. We're not looking for P1. We're looking for P2. So P2 will be equals to 180 minus 56.14. And that is 123.86 degrees. Yeah, it is a long and painful exercise, but we have to do what we have to do. So that is 4. 1.3. Let's go ahead and do 4.1.4. 4.1.4. Circle N is reflected about to the x axis and then translated two units upwards to obtain circle M. Determine the equation of circle M in the form x minus c squared plus y minus d squared is equal to r squared. Okay, we have a few translations here. Let's go ahead and look at the first one. So reflection about the x-axis. You just put a negative sign on the y value. So the coordinates of n were 2 and minus 3. If we reflect about the x-axis, we're going to get 2 and positive 3. Because minus multiplied by minus 3 should be plus 3. So that is our reflection. And now we need our translation two units upwards, so two units upwards. How will that affect our equation? Now we have two and three. We need to move two units upwards. From positive three, if we move two units upwards, then we're going to have two and five. If we moved two units upwards before the reflection about the x-axis, we were going to have two minus one. But we're reflecting about the x-axis first before our translation. Hence, we have 2 and 5 as the coordinates of our center. Now, let's just conclude by setting up our equation. We have x minus 2 squared plus y minus 5 squared being equals to r squared. Nothing was said about uh, the radius. So, I'm assuming it's still the same, 289. 4.1.4. Let's move to 4. Point Two. An infinite number of circles each touching the next are drawn between O and C. Let's just go ahead and highlight that. We have O at our center and C there. And then the centers of all the circles lie on the negative x-axis. The radius of the largest circle centered at A is 4 units. And the radius of each circle thereafter is halved. B is a point on the largest circle. 4.2.1 show that OC is equals to 16 units. We're supposed to show that OC is equals to 16 units. The first circle has a radius of 4 and a diameter of 
8. And then the next circle will have a radius of 2 and a diameter of 4. And then we're going to have plus 2, plus 1, so on and so on until, until we reach infinity. So what I'm realizing here is that our first term is 8 and our ratio is 1 divided by 2 because the radiuses of our circle are getting halved. So if we have infinity circles between O and C, then we can simply say that the sum to infinity is equal to A divided by 1 minus R. A being the diameter of the first circle, that is 8. And we divide that by 1 minus the ratio. The radiuses are getting halved, so we have 1 divided by 2. And this is equal to 16. So indeed, the value of OC is 16 units. Let's move ahead and do 4.2.2. If BC is a tangent to circle A at B, write down the size of angle ABC, providing a reason for your answer. If BC, let's just join BC so that we can have a bit of clarity. So yeah, we need... BC. Let's go ahead and just join those two points. BC is a tangent. AB is a radius. We know that the radius is perpendicular to the tangent. So that is to say that the size of angle ABC is 90 degrees because the tangent is perpendicular the radius. 4.2.3. Hence determine turn of angle C. So we're looking for turn of this angle right here. Well, now we have a right angle triangle. This angle here is 90. So AC is our hypotenuse. Turn of theta is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. So the opposite is AB. So what is AB? AB is equal to 4 units. That is our radius. And what about AC? AC is equal to OC minus OA, right? OC is 16 units, OA is 4 units. So AC is equal to 12 units. AB is our opposite. AC is our hypotenuse. We, we need to find BC, our adjacent. Let's go ahead and do that and see what we're going to have. We can say that AC squared is equal to AB squared plus BC squared. AC, that will be 12 squared, being equal to AB, 4 squared, plus BC squared. So it should be easy to see that BC is equal to uh, the square root of 144 minus 16. This is equal to 8 square root of 2. So now we can say that turn of angle C is equal to the opposite. Uh, the opposite is 4 units divided by the adjacent, which is 8 square root of 2. We can further simplify that, but let's just leave it like that. And 4.2.4, the last question, we're looking for the equation of BC. Angle C is the inclination of line BC. So this is the gradient of the line BC. So now we can say that Y is equal to MX plus C, but we know the value of M. It is 4 divided by 8 square root of 2X plus C. We just need to substitute a point and we have the equation of BC. Which point can we substitute? We can substitute point C because we know that at C, the x coordinate is minus 16 and the y coordinate is 0. So if we substitute that, we're going to get 0 being equal to 4 divided by 8 square root of 2 multiplied by minus 16 plus C. So C will be equal to 4 square root of 2. And now we can conclude and say that the equation of BC. 4 divided by 8 square root of 2x plus 4 square root of 2.